Hey, what's up everybody? Patty Stash coming at you. Um, I'm actually recording this because I want to post it on my YouTube. I don't really have an active YouTube, but I plan to start making a lot of videos. And that's kind of what I'm talking about here. Man, this vein in my neck pops out like a mofo. Ugh. So, um, just to kind of explain my situation, right? Last two years of my life, all I was trying to do was survive. And for the people that know, I had some serious health conditions. Somehow I managed to come out clean on the other side and uh, I'm starting to feel better. My life is getting back on track. Things are starting to come back. Uh, you know, they say after chemotherapy, it usually takes about a year, year and a half before your body like recovers. And I'm seeing that because it's been maybe six months and even though I do feel better, I do not feel like my old self again. I don't have the energy I did. I don't have, just, it's not the same. I'm not the same person yet. I'm constantly dehydrated. That's the worst thing. So, um, for two years or so, I basically just tried to maintain whatever it was that I was doing. I changed a lot in my life to accommodate a lifestyle that's a little more relaxed and laid back, but obviously I'm so freaking hyper all the time, it doesn't work. But uh, what I basically mean by this is because, you know, this is six months ago when I'm still going through chemo or just finishing chemo, my body is a wreck, right? So there's times where I'll be doing stuff and I'll be walking for two hours and then I become so exhausted that I like, can't keep my eyes open and I'll have to take a nap. Now, that doesn't happen anymore, but because that happened for so long, I didn't feel comfortable um, being like an adult. And when I say being an adult, I mean like a responsible person. And responsibilities is like being around all the time to answer questions for people and answering emails and things like that. But I, I just would go sometimes hours and hours without getting back to people, sometimes days if I don't see their message. And I don't like that because as a business individual, I'm not like that. When I was recruiting neurosurgeons, you know, for five years, like if I made one mistake, I'm done. So I became obsessive. I became anal with everything that I did because I put my heart and soul into things and I don't like to screw shit up. So for the last couple of years, I've kind of just been coasting in the market. And what I mean by coasting is instead of doing the typical, you know, active swing trading that I did for so long, I instead kind of started looking for tokens that I believed had strong fundamentals and I just wanted to kind of stick with them. But in that market, uh, that process just didn't work. You can't stay in a token for too long because it eventually reaches a saturation point and it takes months and months and months to recover. So while things are taking months and months and months to recover, it's hard to make money. So that's why I want to start um, solidifying positions, which I've already done in certain tokens that I really like, but I'm going to become old Patty Stash. And what I mean by old Patty Stash is going back 20 years ago when I was in the stock market, I was always focusing on small cap, nano cap, micro caps, you know, the, the pink sheet OTC stocks. The ones that were extremely high risk, a lot of them were scams, a lot of them, if you didn't know what you were doing, like, you're playing with fire. And I did it for so many years that I got really good at it and I was willing to take those risks. So with a lot of the stuff that I do now, I take those risks because I'm willing to. Because I say to myself, if this pays off, I'll make, you know, 100 to one on my money. But if it doesn't, I lose it all. And if I lose it all, I'm willing to because if I do it two or three more times and then one of those hits, it makes up for all the money I lost. So I've been kind of conservative. You know, obviously I haven't had a lot of projects that I've talked about in the last couple of years. Somehow I get a shitty reputation and like everything makes sense about my reputation. It's because a lot of people listen to what I say and they gravitate toward me. So when they do, and there's a token that they're in and everything's pumping and everything's great, excellent. But oftentimes, these projects that I buy into, they start changing things and it's like, if I don't like it, 
I don't want to be in it. So my sentiment does change. But it's like, you know, I always say, if this continues to happen, if they continue to do this, then this project's going to be great. But a lot of times when I say that, these projects they ended up not doing that. And that's where I go, you know what? I still believe this project has those fundamentals that I initially talked about. But because of these other factors, I don't think it's going to play out in the time frames that I expected. So I'm going to sit on it and I'm going to look for other things to do in the market. And that's what I do. I'm going to start doing that a lot more. I have a skill set that a lot of people don't. And I can say that I have that skill set based on the ability for me to be confident in the things that I do. Buying tokens that are really speculative are fucking scary if you don't really know what to do or what you're doing or what to look for. I do. I know what to look for. So I have the ability to find a token that I know is something good. But now here's where it gets a, becomes a slippery slope for me. If it's a small cap and I start talking about it, there's people that have been following me for years that see that and they'll start to buy in blindly. And then that leads to a price pump. So then all, you, all of a sudden, you know, I'm still bullish on it. But now there's a lot more people buying it starts going up. And this happens with everybody that has any influence in the market. So when that happens, the price starts to pump, you know, people start to buy in, people start making money, and then like anything, everything that goes up eventually comes down or it hits a saturation point, it slows down, and then sometimes it hits resistance, then bounces, it moves higher, sometimes it doesn't, it moves slower. Oh my God, it's a fucking Ferrari A12 Competizione! No. Oh. You're gonna, you're gonna fucking see this. You ain't not gonna see this. Look at it. It's a fucking 1.6 million dollar fucking car. Yeah, that's the car I want. Although it could be just the uh, the, uh, the the GTS or I forget which one's the hot hot you know hard top or the the uh, it doesn't look like the Competizione. Hang on. Oh yeah, he had nothing. So, continuing, um, so what I've been basically doing is when I get into a token, other people see it, I don't tell people, sometimes I just buy it, and because people track my wallet, they start to buy, but what I'm going to start doing is, I am going to start getting more involved with bigger projects, or projects that have enough volume for liquidity, for people to get in and out, so that it's not something that there's a storyline that I get caught up in. I'm getting fucking sick and tired of getting caught up in these storylines where it's like I like the idea, and because I like the idea, I like to integrate myself into the community. But when I do that, somehow I always kind of get people that rally behind me, and then they're like, Patty, Patty, Patty. But then if anything changes, and I go, you know what? I don't like what these guys did. They fucked everything up. And I decide to say, I am not going to talk about this. I become the fucking public enemy number one. Because I was the number one guy getting people hyped up. So when I'm the guy getting hyped up, and then I decide to shift, everybody goes, fuck you, Patty! You're supposed to be our guy! But I'm not, and I'm not going to anymore. I'm going to do what's best for me. So when I had the most success, I wasn't nearly as good as what I was doing back then as I am now, but is swing trading tokens on charts and momentum and volume. Not necessarily small caps. I'm gonna start getting involved with bigger caps, but what I'm gonna start doing is I'm eventually gonna open a call channel. And I'm gonna basically use this channel as my, hey, this is where I'm getting in on this asset. Now whether it goes up or down, I don't fucking care. Well, I, 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 that's, I worded that really bad. I really do care. But if it goes down and then, you know, it takes a while for it to go back up, if people want to bitch at me because it temporarily went down, whereas ultimately I saw it going higher, but it didn't necessarily mean within that week, it could have been three fucking months. Those people could kiss my ass. But if it goes higher and makes like a 2x pump, right? I am not going to tell people when to sell. I never ever have called sells in my life. 
I will say, hey, this is an area of resistance and people might sell, but then when I do that, people are immediately gonna sell. So I probably won't call sells. So if I buy an asset and it pumps 100%, that's a fucking huge amount. Obviously in the degen world, you know, 100% is nothing. But if a, pump, a token pumps 100%, Everyone that saw me make that initial call has no fucking thing that they could say to me, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, because if it's up 100% and you don't take profits and then all of a sudden something happens and it shits, that's not my fault. I was the one that alerted the token, not the one that's telling you, now you gotta sell. I don't, like if, if fucking 50 people bought something on my recommendation, you think all fucking 50 of them I'm gonna send messages to and be like, okay, you should sell here, okay, you should sell here. No, I don't know how many fucking tokens you have, I don't know how much money you have, but more importantly, I always say, I don't give a fuck what you do. So, in the next couple of weeks, I am shifting. I am doing away with this small cap, getting involved with these projects because it has done nothing but caused me shitty fucking stress. Suka. I was the biggest fucking supporter of Suka. I was up a lot on Suka, but because I was a fucking team player, I was an idiot. I didn't sell when I should have, and then the people that were selling that manipulated the chart then flipped the fucking narrative so that when the price imploded, they said that I was the one selling. No, 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 that didn't happen. I did sell, I sold much later, for a fucking huge loss. And yes, I still have my position. I sold a portion, a nice portion of it, but I still have it. So it was frustrating because like everything changed with that token. When they said one thing, they did the other. And then this whole token that everybody was busting my balls about buying, it's a mathematical freak, but the, uh, the developers may be the dumbest person I've ever fucking come across in all the years I've ever been in finance. He doesn't even know what the fuck he owns. So basically, he, he was saying one thing, does the other, says something, does the other. And then, you know, recently I started talking about this Grinch token. And because the price of his token imploded, somehow he and his cronies colluded together to say that I was the one that ruined the token. Like, oh my God, if only people knew the story. So yeah, I bought another token. So what? So I guess because I wasn't in the telegram trying to fucking pump people up like I was doing for weeks while people used me as exit liquidity, I became the bad guy. So not only am I so fucking down on my whole position, I somehow was the one that ruined it because I wasn't paying attention and I was talking about another project. But here's the funny thing. The fucking developer has a reputation of creating projects. Once they die down, he fucking abandons them and goes to something else. I had six million people warn me about this guy, and I said, hey, whatever, man, fuck him. His token is what he created. The renounced contract is what already gave it its value. So whatever the fuck he wants to do, whatever, it doesn't fucking matter. He is the developer, so he does have the most influence. But I was saying to him, I go, bro, you don't even know what the fuck you created, you dumb motherfucker, because he's not working toward it. So because he's not working toward it, it shows that he's doing something else, and of course he denied it. Now there's a new token that came out that, you know, he's like, I'm not going to create a new one. So instead he tried to bring an old one back from, from the dead. And now he's telling everybody that's going to be the next big thing. And so, like, you know, you just told everybody that you're doing this thing with hold, and then you jump to a new token, and now you're trying to say you're going to bring the value from that token back to hold. So I guess that means you're going to fuck over all the people in the new... Like, dude, you're a fucking loser. But anyway, I'm tired of the shit. And I'm tired of pieces of shit like him, who's a fucking scumbag, and everybody in the whole market knows, trying to blame me with shit. And it's like, it just sucks, because it's like, if you get a bunch of people that collude together, and they all say one thing, people believe it. But everybody that knows me, and they saw what happened, they know the fucking truth. So the point of this whole fucking chit-chat is, pretty soon, I'm going to open an Alpha Alerts channel, and it's not going to be free. I'm going to charge a fucking subscription service because I know that once I get into the fucking swing of things and I start picking tokens, picking tokens based off all the shit that I've ever learned in my life, picking tokens that are at the prime location to break out where the volume just quite hasn't hit yet, where they've got these situations that will give it this element of demand, I'm going to go, boom, 
I'm buying here or I'm in here, this is the token, whatever. And if you're paying for my Alpha Alert channel, you'll be able to get that information before anyone else. Maybe 48 hours later, I'll release it to everyone else. But already, if you fucking know what that token is before everyone else and you read my analysis and you see that what I'm saying makes sense and you jump in, good. Because once that thing starts to fucking pump, when I see it getting saturated, I'm going to start making my fucking exit. I'm not going to say anything. If it's up 100%, 20%, 50%, whatever, hopefully people take profits. If it goes to 10 million percent and I sold and it kept going, good. I'm happy. I want people to make money. But my point is, I'm going to start doing what I'm best at, and that is momentum swing trading. It's always been my fucking bread and butter. I have been... Like, even fucking 20 years ago when I was in the stock market, I was the number one person on Investor's Hub when it came to followers. Number one in the fucking world. I was a shithead kid in my 20s, maybe into my 30s, but I knew my fucking shit. I didn't ask for people to follow me. They followed me. That was the biggest stock, penny stock forum in the world, and I was the number one person. Then I got kicked off. <laughs> I got kicked off for exposing a fucking scam. But that scam was so big, it was on a level that these people high paid off the fucking people that own the website. If you want to know the scam, it's called Sponge Tech. You guys might remember, because back in the day when, when football was doing the hard knocks and they first came out, Sponge Tech paid for the advertisement on the football player's jersey so that everybody that had the Sponge Tech, or all professional players had the Sponge Tech on their fucking jersey. So it was like a, the biggest fucking crypto scam in years. And I called it out. And then the fucking CEO, Mike Moskowitz, Mike Moskowitz, he hit me up. And he offered to buy my shares at a fucking massive premium just to shut me up. And you think I said, what do you think I said? Fuck you, motherfucker, I'd rather fucking die. And then they kicked me off the site, and then I lost all my followers. So I was like one of the first people to ever get fucking canceled. <laughs> this is like 20-something years ago. So I got canceled for doing what I thought was the right thing. I will always do what I think is the right thing. I will never, ever, ever bow down to fucking anyone. If anyone is has the balls to fucking challenge me with any debate about anything I've ever said, I'm happy to do it. Yeah, I've made some calls that blow up in my face and I fucking look stupid, but a lot of the calls that I've made have been right. The long-term predictions that I've called, I've made, there is fucking nobody in this market that I know that has more verifiable proof of hitting bottoms, tops, whatever. Doesn't fucking matter. When I call something, I fucking stick to it. I have conviction. I know what the fuck I'm talking about. I called the bottom of the Bitcoin market at 3,300 back in fucking March of 2019 or whatever it was. I called the bottom of the Bitcoin market when it hit 15.5 on November 21st, 2022. Yeah. So... And I have all the verifiable proof. So it's like, maybe it's this time in my life where I actually hire someone that knows shit about business that I say to him, hey man, let's go back and look at all the stuff that I've said and done over the years that I still have proof of saying and doing and compare it to anyone else in the world to see who could fucking beat me on this shit. I don't think anybody called the fucking tops, bottoms, although Richard Hart did. Fucking Richard Hart, everybody hates Richard Hart. Now he's a scammer because of this hex bullshit, whatever. But when he was making people multi, multi, multi millionaires, they loved him. But the moment things don't go people's way, they point fingers. And Richard was the one that made all them rich. Now he's like, nah, he's a scammer. Fuck you, losers. You fucking losers. You fucking losers. Fuck you, you fucking losers. Fuck you, you fucking losers. So. This is uh, Patty Stash. This is who I am. The bull market's coming back. I am going to fucking blow the doors off when it comes to swing trades because I am going to find the best tokens with the best fucking charts that have the volume that anybody will be able to buy, sell for a fucking profit. If you don't sell, then go fuck yourself. It's not my problem. 
But when people follow me and I start making these calls and these fucking tokens start exploding, the number of people that are going to be willing to pay for my shit are going to fucking explode. My entire life, I've never done anything like this. I've never had anything set that actually was, you know, consistent or anything along those lines. But once I become consistent with my calls, people are going to see the consistency of what I have and the ability that I have to do it. And I don't think there's many other people in the market that are better at it than me. So people that know me, they know I know my shit. People that don't know me, get to know me. Because if you actually do, you probably will find out that I know my shit. Let's do it.